Today, we become legends. Hey, my name's Inter, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we have 11.4 bonus update notes to go over. Uh, obviously, 11.4 was a pretty big patch, and uh, a lot of things got introduced, uh, especially two new items that are going to be getting changed in these bonus update notes. So there's a few things to go over. Uh, let's just jump right in. Uh, so first up, uh, Sphinx Bauble was increased to 2800 when they initially said 2900, uh, but they feel like it's fine at 2800. I think this is probably fine. Like The, the item's purchase rate seems to have fallen off enormously. And 2800 gold is, is still a luxury price for a luxury item, so I think this is completely fine. Alright, but first off for the actual changes for the patch, uh, Equinox, they have decreased the base heal from 2 to 1, and they have decreased the damage per level scaling for hitting in the back from uh, 3 to 2. So the uh, the heal nerf isn't really that relevant, honestly. Uh, by the time you get this item online, you're probably like, I don't know, level, level 6, level 8, something like that. So really, the taking one off of the base heal isn't going to make too much of a difference, because it has one per level as well. So basically, let, let's say you're level 8 when you have this item, you know, you're going to be healing 9 instead of 10. It's probably not going to make a massive difference, honestly, and the healing is like the really strong component of this item. Uh, the damage will be a little bit more relevant because they're decreasing that by one, but it's on the per level scaling. So that will be a total decrease of 20 by the time you get to level 20 with this item. Uh, will this be enough? Uh, probably not. I think honestly, if anything, this item just needs to have some kind of AOE multiplier applied to it like a lot of items do. Uh, Death's Embrace has this, I believe, and Death's Toll as well. Like where if you're AOE basic attacking, you're going to get, um, I think it's a third value or is it half value? I think it might be half actually. You get like half value from AOE targets that you hit and only full healing on the first one. Uh, this item doesn't have that for some reason. I feel like it probably should on the healing component because the main reason this item is so ridiculously broken at the moment is those AoE auto-attacking soul in us. You know, your Bologna's, your Erlang Shen's, your Osiris's, that kind of stuff. Like, yes, it's still probably too strong even on uh, single target hitters. But I think like this kind of a nerf paired with an AoE multiplier as well on the item for the heal would, would probably put it like, much more back into line because the, the applications where it's so mega broken are those AoE auto-attackers. Uh, maybe we'll see some more changes to this item in the actual 11.5 full patch. This is just a bonus balance to kind of stop the item completely dominating, but honestly, this change won't really do too much. Uh, the damage isn't really the most relevant part of this. It's the healing, really, and uh, the healing has barely been nerfed. And of course, the other item introduced in this patch, uh, Stormseeker, we basically had the two sides of a coin with these two items. Equinox was completely broken. Stormseeker was completely trash. Uh, they have increased the base physical power on the item from 15 to 25, so that's absolutely a massive buff, and they have increased the attack speed per auto from 0.15 to 0.25. Again, another really big buff for the item. Item. So essentially now every 100 stacks you're going to be getting 25% attack speed instead of 15% and I think it's absolutely reasonable to get this thing to like you know 2 to 300 stacks by the late game if you, if you want to go that optimizes it quite well. And just the base 10 power increase is like actually huge on this thing as well like the base stats were so terrible that like you bought this item and it was almost like you didn't even buy an item until you got these uh, attack speed stacks online. Uh, 25 power isn't great but it's semi competitive with other like attack speed hunter items and uh, auto attack soul learner items and stuff like that. So yeah this is, this is massive. Uh, I expect Stormseeker to maybe be viable now. Honestly, if I want to give my hot take on this, I think it's going to be really good now. I think this is actually like massive bust to the item, especially the fact that it has 10 extra power on the base form. It just makes the power curve of buying this item, like you don't feel anywhere near as bad about buying this thing anymore. It's still awkward to stack, especially if you're going to go out on like ADC because you're not really boxing that much in the laning phase. Uh, you know, you're going to be boxing a lot more in, in solo lane with this kind of an item, but I think it's going to definitely be a lot better. Uh, Hydras, they have decreased the bonus damage from 30 to 25% of physical power. Uh, I don't think Hydras is the problem here. Uh, once again, I'm going to go on one of my um, physical power scaling rants. Physical auto attackers just shouldn't scale at 100% of physical power. I think it's absolutely dumb that it still works that way. It should be 85, maybe 90 if you want to be generous. Like, I don't think Hydras is particularly the problem. I think uh, the amount of power that has been added to builds over time in Smite, like the builds nowadays compared to the builds like, you know, five, six, seven years ago, there's just so much more physical power available in builds. And the fact that physical autos still do 100% of your physical power, you know, when you've got 300 power in your build, starting 300 down to every single auto you do. I think that's the more major problem, not necessarily Hydra's. But if they don't want to make such a sweeping change like that this late into the life cycle when Smite 2 is coming out soon, I, I guess this Hydra's nerf is kind of understandable. A lot of the top junglers uh, for the longest time, you know, Thanatos, Thor, Susano, they're, they're all major Hydra's lament users. But yeah, I think this is um, a band-aid fix on like a larger problem in the game, honestly. Uh, Wukong, they have decreased the duration of his passive by 4 seconds and they have decreased the minion bonus damage on Magic Cudgel uh, by 10%. I think this is fine. Uh, Wukong has been a top soul in I wouldn't say the top soul in but a top soul in for quite a while. Uh, nothing this down makes sense. 12 seconds is an absurd amount. And then, yeah, decreasing the minion bonus damage will just make his uh, wave clear a little bit less oppressive in the early game. Uh, AMC, they have decreased the bees damage scaling per tick by 1% and decreased the movement speed on his hives, uh, mainly in the late game, but not really too massive of a change. 
I think for a bonus balance, this is pretty fine. Uh, AMC is mainly seeing, like, a massive amount of play in, like, top level. In, like, mid mid and low level, AMC is, like, not actually that popular in mid. And they also did the Bluestone nerf last patch as well. So, I, I think this is probably fine to just see where AMC is at after these changes. Uh, Thoth, they have increased the cooldown of his 1 by 2 seconds and decreased the bonus ability damage on Glyph of Pain by 5 at all ranks. This is fine again, I would say. Uh, the fact that this was on an 8 second cooldown when it also refunds, like, is it half a second each time you hit a god? So, essentially, you can take 1.5 seconds off of this cooldown. And that applies after your 40% cooldown reduction. So when you have 40% cooldown reduction and this goes down at like, what, 5.4 seconds or something, and then you take 1.5 off of that, that's like a less than a 4 second cooldown. So <laughs> increasing this to 10 seconds is completely understandable. Uh, the low cooldown on this is half the reason Thoth is so oppressive. And finally, uh, the cooldown buff, they have shifted the flat cooldown reduction from 5% plus 0.75% per level to just 10% at all levels. This makes sense. Honestly, I don't know why it wasn't this way in the first place. Um, it's going to make it a little bit stronger in the early game, but yeah, it gave us absolutely ridiculous amount of CDR at level 20. Like, 20% cooldown just on one jungle buff is, like, absolutely absurd. And in the late game, by the time that actually matters, you probably got max CDR on your solo laner builds anyway. Like, most solo laners want to build max CDR. And uh, maybe not some of the top solo laners in the current meta, because of Equinox, they're probably uh, building other items and not full CDR. But the fact that this gave 20%, I guess this also technically nerfs um, auto-attack solo laners as well, because uh, ability-based solo laners, you're already going to have minimum, like, 30% cooldown on your build by that point anyway. But yeah, I think this makes sense to just shift it to 10% at all levels. It's going to make a little bit more powerful in the early game, but uh, significantly less powerful in the late game. But yeah, just a very small bonus balance patch here. We'll probably see some more major changes in 11.5. Uh, the Equinox changes, not enough in my opinion. I think it's going to need more, especially um, an AoE coefficient on the healing, I think makes sense. Uh, Stormseeker buffs are great. I think the item's going to be pretty solid right now. Hydra's Lament is, is whatever. I think there's a bigger problem there. Uh, Wukong nerfs are good. AMC nerfs are good, but maybe needs more. Well, we'll have to see after these changes, because he did also nerf Bluestone. Uh, Thoth changes are good, in my opinion, and uh, cooldown buff changes are good. Just a very small patch, just touching down a few things. Uh, we'll probably be waiting on 11.5 for more significant changes. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed my review of this. Uh, just a small patch, and I will catch you guys in another one later on. Peace.